and a very dramatic picture that the Quran continues to paint regarding the hereafter. Particularly not just the hereafter, but the day of Qiyamah, the day of resurrection itself. So now we're going to be studying the Naziat. And Naziat also, the surah starts with sentences that is unfamiliar to the to the Arabs of that time. What is the Prophet talking about? Is it referring to angels? Is it referring to winds? What is it talking about? Majority of the scholars have said that these er, this first few ayat, one Naziat, the Gharqa, one Nashitati Nashta, was Sabihati Sabha, was Sabihati Sabha. These are referring to angels. Majority of the opinion says this. However, there's a very strong opinion that these are not referring to angels. These are referring to something else. Again, this may not even have been discovered yet, but it seems like it's sounding like it's talking about the winds. The reason it's not most likely talking about angels is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically goes against angels being feminine, if you remember, in the female. And the ayat here, one naziyati gharqa, one nashitati nashta, are in the feminine form. So one opinion is the majority opinion, which could be correct. One opinion is a very strong opinion, which could be correct. The mo the, then after mentioning this, the main theme starts with يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَ تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّاجِفَ قُلُوبُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ وَاجِفَ One of the most interesting things about, especially in the 30th Jews, you'll find this. The most interesting thing about the Day of Judgment is the sound, you know, يَوْمَ يُنْفَقُ فِي السُّورِ the, the, the trumpet that's blown. But it's also called sa'ikha. Sa'ikha. There's other words for it too. Uh, so this noise that's going to come, right? But sometimes it's also described by the movement of the earth, the shaking of the earth. So these things, the the moment of the sa'a, that hour, was it will be it will have a certain sound and it will have a certain shaking. So it's giving a very vivid picture. So and especially these surahs are those. Um, not this particular surah, but other surahs that are going to follow. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that whoever studies these surahs, the image of the Day of Judgment will be imprinted in his mind, and it's actually true. Um, anyway, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Ulubun yawma idin wajifa." The days, the, the hearts will be trembling on that day. Abu Sawruha Khashia. The eyes and their insight both are, are going to be downtrodden. Now, uh, they will say, the Arabs, they used to say, oh, will we be resurrected? How are we going to be resurrected again? After our bones have been scattered and, you know, everything has been dispersed, how is it going to happen? If this is the case, this is a very, very bad bargain for us. This is khasira. This is a khusr, a loss for us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, He says, فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجَرَةٌ وَاحِدٌ That's just one sound. I can't go into the different meanings of these sounds right now, but they're different sounds. فَإِذَا هُمْ بِالسَّاحِرَةٌ And then they will be come out, coming out of their graves. After mentioning this, now Allah changes the direction. You know like you're watching a movie, there's one scene, then there's another scene. And from one scene to another scene, there can be totally different characters. Like in one scene, you're looking at, let's say, Spider-Man, right? And then in the next scene, you're looking at the villain, right? Totally different, but they're also connected. They come together and connect at some point. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hadith Musa? Did the news of Musa والسلام, reach you? And what is that? Musa goes to Fir'aun just like the Prophet's going to Quraysh, right? He's going to Quraysh and Fir'aun responds to Musa in the same way Quraysh is responding to the Prophet so Allah says, إِذْ نَادَى رَبُّهُ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ تُوَى إِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ تَغَى فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَنْ تَزَكَّ Would you like to be purified? Would you like to be doing better? Would you like to become a better human being? أَوْ أَحْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَ And I can guide you to Allah and you can have fear of Him. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةُ الْكُبْرَىٰ And he showed them many great signs. Just like the Prophet brought Quran and showed them many great signs. Right? Not just the Quran, but the Prophet showed them like, Shaq al qamar he uh, split the moon, right? By the way, just as a side point, that ayah, iqtarabat al sa'a wa shaq al qamar can have two meanings. One is, the Prophet pointed to the moon and it split. The other meaning is, iqtarabat al sa'a wa shaq al qamar The hour has come near, 
because the moon has been shaqqa means to cut, to, to dig. So when did man, did man ever go and dig the moon? Man has never gone, we've never brought the stones from the moon to earth. We dug the moon, right? So one meaning could be, the hour has come near because man has now dug out the moon. This is the other meaning. Both meanings are correct. Meaning from the Arabic language perspective. Shaqa means split. Yes, so when you cut, yes. Shaqa means to cut into the ground. Split in half. Like Shuk, you cut something in half. Brother, that's the shuk brother shuk. Allah says, what, uh, shuk shuk crack. Shuk Yes, it shuk means shuk that. And what does it say? But crack from the earth, from the ground, from the plants also. Shaka also means to dig, by the way. It has both meanings. Huh? Yeah, anyway. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Musa alayhi salatu wa and uh, the way the Quraysh had responded to the Prophet ﷺ was similar to the way that Musa ﷺ had responded to uh, Musa, uh, the Fir'aun had responded to Musa ﷺ. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after that, what did he do? Now this is the thing, when they hear the message, what do they do? Then he says, ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ وَيَسْعَى أَدْبَرَ means to turn your back. Yas'a to struggle. So he turned his back and he struggled against Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Why did he have to do that? This is the important question. Why was the Quraysh, the leadership of Quraysh, so concerned with what the Prophet was saying? Let's talk about Fir'aun first and then we'll talk about Quraysh because it relates. <laughs> he turned his back and he struggled. Why? Because he felt a low self-esteem. He felt that what Musa, he has something with him and if I don't take care of it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in jeopardy. He felt something that what Musa was saying was gonna affect him somehow in a negative way because of his own low self-esteem. So then what happened? ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى And then what does he do? ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى What does حَشَرَ mean? حَشَرَ is a very interesting word because it is the U word used to gather animals. وَهُشُ حُشِرَتْ on the day of judgment, this ayah is going to come in the, in, the, in the next passage. When the animals are gathered together, okay? Hushira means to gather animals. Literally, that's what. He gathered the people by what? By force. And then he called them. It's like propaganda machine, right? So because he feels, right, this low self-esteem within him, and he feels that Musa has something strong with him and he has all these miracles he's showing people and people are going to believe in him so then he starts his political agenda and then in order to prove himself I'm bigger because he felt his low self-esteem so in order to compensate that low self-esteem you know like, uh, like if you're a leader and you feel somebody else is you know doing very good then you will remind everybody, hey, you know, don't forget, I'm the leader here, you know, because you felt, feel the low self-esteem, right? So, anyway, Then what happened? So Allah subhanahu wa took him to task. Anyway, after Allah mentions this story of Musa alayhi then Allah comes back to, now, didn't you see how Musa and Fir'aun, what happened? And Fir'aun lost. What's going to happen to Quraysh? You're also reacting to the Prophet. You're saying he's majnoon because you can't answer the question. The Quran says bring something like the Quran if you're truthful, right? Bring something. If you have some argument, bring it forth. But they can't bring it forth. They have a low self-esteem. They feel bad. They don't know what to do. Now they have propaganda machine working against the Prophet ﷺ. After mentioning this, then what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by saying, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by talking about the creation of the heavens and the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Are you a more difficult creation or the sky? And this is very scientifically very interesting, but I'm not going to go into details. It's actually very, very precise. Um, but um, I'm going to just skip. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Look at how I created this universe. Then the main point. And this surah deals with two types of people. The next surah also deals with two types of people. 
Qamatul Kubra is the main word here. On that day, man will remember, what did I do? Right? When you see the, every, when you come out of your, when you're brought out of your graves, which is mentioned here, when you're brought out of your graves, what will you be thinking about? What did I do? Right? What did I do? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This the one who rebelled, because why? He chose this life over the next life. Muslims always, a true Muslim will always choose the next life over this life. This life is very short. Then in opposite to this, and then this is my last point with this surah. And the one who feared standing before Allah, and he fought against his inner self. Right? He, he fought against his inner self. So these are the two people mentioned at the end. So this is the, you can say, a roundabout theme of the surah, this surah. The next surah is very interesting, Surah Abasa. You all know the story where the Prophet ﷺ went to the leadership of the Quraysh. Why? Because every da'i wants, every da'i, every leader will want that if I can get the leadership to agree, this is the best thing that can happen. So from that perspective, the Prophet was doing what any da'i would naturally do. And then his, his uh, blind uh, cousin comes. And you know when you ever notice when blind people talk, they tend to talk loud, right? You ever notice that? You ever seen it? Blind people tend to talk loud. So he talked a little bit loud. But the main point the Prophet Allah makes in this point is, Allah says, فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّ You were paying attention to them. It should have been that they are paying attention to you. Because when, and, and when the Prophet's uncle came and he was blind and he was poor, and they were acting like, oh, you know, we don't want to be with him. Kind of like, keep us out of this. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa an al wa, And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa amma man istaghna. This is the main word here. The other person, he thinks, I don't need help. I'm istaghna, I'm free. I don't need counsel, I don't need advice, I don't need guidance. Right? So this is one, on one side. Then, what I was referring in Juma. then after that, this is mentioned. Which is قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ How do you, this, how, man is destroyed because of his kufr. And that is discussed in the next few surahs. Because when you don't have tawheed, when you don't have Islam, the sins it will lead you.